Good morning, everyone. Uh, Bart, you can start recording. Good morning, everyone. I'm John Amodio. I'm chairman of SCORE on Staten Island. Uh, SCORE is a national organization. We have about uh, 10,000 volunteers uh, throughout the country. On Staten Island, we have uh, 15 mentors that could help with uh, providing education and mentoring to uh, businesses on the island. One of the subjects that we've had requests for a number of times is uh, QuickBooks. How do I get started with QuickBooks? Uh, is it beneficial to me as a, a small business? And we were talking about small businesses, but not only talking about uh, for profit companies, we're talking about not for profits as well. So we've um, asked Anthony Benelli to uh, present to us today the subject of online QuickBooks for small businesses. This is being sponsored by Richmond County Savings Bank and SCORE of Staten Island. We thank Richmond County for providing funding for us to put this workshop on. Uh, it, it enables us to um, advertise it and let people know that it's happening. Otherwise, we'd have nobody here today. The um, Anthony is an enrolled agent, has his own business, and uh, he's worked with SCORE for a number of years. He's actually put on a similar presentations in the past. Uh, at a more advanced level for people. We've also had him put on the more advanced level for uh, CPAs and uh, people who wanted to get the credits. This is not intended to, we're not providing any CPE credits with this webinar. It's intended for people who are in business or want to get into business and need to get started with, a, with some type of a bookkeeping system or are unhappy with the one that they have and are trying to uh, get online. I'm looking to use this myself. So this is gonna be very in informative for me to use with uh, small businesses that I'm trying to work with. Um, with that being said, I just want to point out a couple of uh, uh, administrative things to you today. Number one, your line is going to be muted. Uh, and number two, please use the Q&A versus the chat if you have any questions. Uh, it, it says that we will se send copies of slides to you. We did send them out last night. It is a large file. Uh, it, it's something that you could use to refer back to. But one, one more thing that will be happening is we're going to be recording this. You may have heard me say that earlier, but we're recording the session and uh, you will be able to get a copy of the um, uh, recording so that you could hear it as well as look at the slides and see at some time in the future if you needed to. We will be sending out a brief survey at the end. We would appreciate it if you would, end, if you would reply to the survey. It's important for us to know how we do and uh, also how you've heard about us and how you've heard about this webinar. Uh, so please, uh, when you receive the um, survey, please complete it. You probably will receive it either late today or tomorrow uh, so that you can return it to us. I thank you for that. With nothing further to say at this point, I wanna turn it over to Anthony and let him get started with his presentation. We expect that it'll take about an hour and a half. One of the things that um, I will say is that if we do not get to answer all of your questions, please um, uh, allow us to get back to you after the webinar is completed so that we could uh, do the, we could answer your questions. We don't wanna leave any unanswered, okay? Thank you very much for listening to me. I'm now going to ask Anthony to get started and um, I'm going to fade into the background so I don't distract you with uh, scratching my head at the same time. Take care. Uh, thank you. Thank you, John. Um, thanks for setting this up. Thank you to SCORE. 
um, and all the sponsors for putting this all together. Um, just want to welcome everyone this morning to this uh, QuickBook seminar that John mentioned. Um, it's a uh, QuickBooks online webinar, basic seminar, um, kind of hoping that we can um, move quickly through some of the uh, points just to give you an idea of how QuickBooks online can work for you, how it can help you, um, and maybe some useful tips uh, and tricks if you've already um, used this version either you know, by yourself, uh, if you have a, a bookkeeper on staff, or if you've done some work with your tax preparer. Um, so just kind of my assumption basically is gonna be that uh, this is all new to most of you. Um, so I apologize if some of it might sound repetitive or um, redundant in a sense, but it's just kind of important just to get the basics. I kind of want to go through just some of the subscription levels because there, while you know there, are, QuickBooks is used by a lot of small businesses. Not one particular level fits everybody. Sometimes you know you don't want to buy too much of, of the product. You don't want to buy too little of a product. Um, so you just want to you always want to find the right product that fits your needs and your business needs. Um, so we're going to go through some subscription levels, the benefits of using QuickBooks Online. Um, some there are some um, case studies that I have in there just to kind of show you who would benefit, what type of businesses would benefit from which generic uh, subscriptions. So just go over a couple of those. Um, logging into your QuickBooks, setting it up talking about transactions, customers, vendors, uh, and running some basic reports. Um, and then if I have a few few minutes at the end, just talking to you about some, um, how to do some recurring transactions, things that might be useful um, if you, just to, you know, some time saving trip, uh, tips and tricks. Some, you, know, you can memorize reports, if you run reports on a consistent basis, if you want to uh, send out invoices to your customers, you can set those up as recurring um, transactions as provided that not, the information kind of remains the same. And then we'll touch upon some uh, online bill pays. So with that said, um, QuickBooks basically is an online system, okay? It's, it's there for you to use wherever you are. So as long as you have an internet connection, you have access to QuickBooks. And in today's day and age, that's kind of important um, because, because of COVID changing a lot of the way people run their businesses. People aren't in their, their offices five days a week, 40 hours a week, the way they used to be. I mean, I, you know, a lot of people are out um, maybe they're working in a remote location. Maybe they're working in a customer location. Maybe they're on site. Um, so wherever your business is, the beauty of QuickBooks is that it goes with you. Um, from your mobile mobile device to iPads um, to laptops, um, or even if you're at home and you know you're working, you have a computer set up at home, you can access your QuickBooks online. So it's it's compatible with all your businesses and helps you easily connect not only with um, your business, but with your employees, if you have any, and your tax preparer comes at the end of the year. So it's, it, they've come a long way from when they first started. Um, QuickBooks Online has maybe been around for you know, maybe 15 years, and it's, been, it's gotten better and better every year. Um, so it, it's very user-friendly, and I think you're gonna find some of these um, tools, very useful. So subscription levels, um, there are technically five. Um, there is what they call a um, um, small business person, freelance type business, uh, which I'll touch upon in a few minutes, but these are the basics, simple start essentials plus and advanced. Um, like I said, you don't wanna buy too little because you might find that certain, you're trying to run certain reports, um, do some transactions, and when you try to run it, you can't, you don't have it, so you have to upgrade. But you don't want to buy too much because then you, if you don't use all these features, you're going to be spending money 
on something that you're not going to be using. Um, for most of the presentation, we're just going to focus on what they call the most popular one, which is plus. Um, but just want to, you know, the main difference between all of these obviously is number one, the number of users that you're allowed to have in, in the system. So if you have just a, your one man shop and you have your accountant and you just really need basic track miles, uh, manage your uh, reports, invoice and receive payments from customers, you know, simple start is where you want to be. Um, but most people have maybe one or two employees. Uh, they need to track employees. They need to track um, invoices. They need to track accounts payable for paying vendors. And they want to have access to a few more um, reports. You know, plus is the, is the option because you can have up to um, five users plus two CPAs. So really a total of seven users to meet your needs. Um, so we can, we're gonna just kind of talk about those in the next couple of slides. Um, advanced is, um, you know, not only is it $90 a month, you know, they have a, uh, a, those discounted prices are really for six months. And after that, they jump up to the normal prices. Um, but those are for more advanced customers. If you have a business say you're tracking um, employees time, and they need to enter their information while they're out in the field. Um, they have, you know, built uh, tracking expenses for those people. So um, it's up to 25 employees, et cetera. So I, unless you have that many, that number of employees, you have people out in the field and you're in the service business like an electrician or a plumber that has, you know, a fleet of people that might not be the right solution for you. But again, um, it's an option if you have that kind of service. Um, the self-employed, like I mentioned, is the basic of the basic. It's seven fifty a month for the first six months, um, and this is really just you're a one-man shop, one-person shop, and you're just trying to track your expenses so that come tax time, you can run a report and fill out your Schedule C. Um, that's really who it's designed for: the, the freelance person, the maybe the person with a side hustle, you know, that you're not, you're working full time for somebody else, but you have, um, you know, an internet business that you're running or you're doing some web design or something along those lines. Um, so it, that's really, you know, you can set it up pretty quickly. And at the end of the year, at the end of the year, you have your reports for your schedule C. The simple start like I mentioned, um, it, it's, um, one one user as well you have the ability to track invoices uh, to run general reports track mileage on your car um, and track if you have sales tax if you're in, the, in a business that you have to pay sales tax they have reports to help you run that type of thing and you have one user for an accountant um, it's pretty pretty straightforward like i said all of these can be run on any computer that has internet access um, and either Chrome or a Firefox or uh, Internet Explorer. If you have Android or um, Apple, you download the app and you, can, you have the app on your phone. Um, QuickBooks Essential takes it one step up. It gives you kind of all the stuff that you have in the basic, the simple start, but you have three users um, and you get to manage with 1099s. Uh, if you have a contractor or a that you're paying to do some work for you, but they're not a full-time employee, they're an independent contractor, you need to send out 1099s at the end of the year. This version helps you uh, take care of that. Um, and again, jumps up in price, but everything else stays pretty much the same. They give you a few extra, few extra reports and they give you the um, 1099 capabilities. And like I said, three users. The, the plus goes one step further. You have an additional uh, 25 reports that you get to run that you don't have on the essentials. Um, you get time tracking, invoice tracking. Um, you have accounts payable for tracking to pay your, your vendors later on. And here you have five users plus two 
um, the cap users. And then the advanced, like I said, um, just to kind of, again, this really the biggest thing is it's up to 25 users um, and you get to track uh, your expenses um, that you get to delegate is really what I want to say. You get to delegate to your employees to uh, upload and track their expenses as they're spending money. So um, if they're out in the field and they have to buy equipment or tools or something to do the job, they can go out, buy it, take a picture of that um, invoice, upload it into the database and tell you why they had to use it, what job they used it for, um, et cetera, so that you can better track how your company spends its money. Again, it's very advanced. Um, you know, it's not just for the, the simple type of business, but it's very it's a very useful tool considering you know um, they've integrated features that beforehand you had to go out and buy um, separate systems to integrate with QuickBooks. Now they've kind of integrated all that for you, so it's kind of a nice little uh, benefit. As we go through just kind of quickly on these subscription levels, you know, I just went through the basics and showed you what the benefits of each um, system is or version is, but you don't want to make this decision alone. So when you decide, you know, as most businesses do, when they said I'm open, I'm setting up shop or I was doing everything pen and paper, or I was using Excel to track my expenses. Now I need to upgrade QuickBooks is on everyone's mind. They're all over the place, they're ubiquitous, um, and they do a ton of marketing to get the small business. And they do a fairly good job, and the product is a very uh, is a solid product for a small business owner. Um, but what they, what I would suggest, and no matter how, how well-versed you, you are, how much research you do on these products, uh, it's important to talk to someone, a trusted advisor, to make sure that you're getting the right product. So um, your CPA, your tax preparer, or some maybe someone else that does this type of work. Um, you know, QuickBooks has the ProAdvisor link that you can uh, go to and search for a, an advisor to help you choose the right level. Um, I am a ProAdvisor. So if you do a search in Staten Island, I'm probably going to be one of those people that would pop up in your list. Um, but it's important just to make sure that you, you know, you talk to someone to make sure you you choose the right product for your business. Um, not to say that you can't choose it on your own, but you want to go through a checklist of items to make sure that this is the right thing for you. Um, so the first one obviously is just a basic an individual uh, who creates websites. Um, they need to track their, their accounts receivable um, and all their expenses and then give her accountant at the, the um, report at the end of the year so they can file their taxes. So um, simple start in this sense should be a good solution for them. Now, obviously, as you grow over time, if you choose one, you can always upgrade to a, a higher level um, it's easier to upgrade than it is to downgrade. Um, so if you're not sure and you start off on the low end, that's fine, but you can always increase as you move along. Um, but it, her, this, in this case, this business is pretty straightforward and they just really need to track invoicing and report taxes. Simple start would be good for them. Um, in this case, we have a dental facility. They have a couple of employees. They, have, they need to track revenue. Um, track payments um, from QuickBooks Online, um, and they have supplies that they have to buy uh, and manage. So they're going to be, you know, since they have multiple employees, um, you know, they move up to the essentials. They don't need to track, um, maybe they pay everything on a cash basis. So there's really no need to pay any vendors on a later time. So um, essentials would be suitable for them. Um, here you have uh, an interior design firm. They have uh, various vendors that they have to pay. 
Um, they don't pay them probably on a consistent, you know, on a cash basis. They pay them on the parole basis. Um, they want to utilize budgets um, and they need, you know, they have two accountants. They have, maybe they have different partners, multiple partners that they want to give access to in addition to their employees, if they have any. Um, so because they need a few more users and they have a, um, a need to pay using the accounts uh, payable function, they need to move up to QuickBooks uh, Plus. Um, you know, here again, this is your um, freelance type person is a Schedule C. Um, they're a real estate agent. They do a lot of traveling. They work for themselves. They don't have any employees, but they need to track a lot of their a lot of their information, specifically mileage. Right, mileage is important. Um, the IRS requires you know you to track mileage and prove your mileage in order to take that deduction. With the, so in order to not lose out on that deduction, um, you know tracking mileage is a, important function. A lot of people use pen and paper. A lot of people use um, uh, Excel. A lot of people use some third-party apps like um, Mileage IQ. Um, but now QuickBooks Online you know, incorporates these functions in there so you can track all the stuff from within one system and it makes things a lot easier for you to uh, move on. So. Um, some benefits that we're going to talk about. Um, so, like I mentioned before, um, I lost my train of thought for a second. There. So, businesses have changed um, to, over the past couple of years, right? In 2019, um, nobody ever thought that the pandemic would hit, and you know it was business as usual. Um, you had your office space, um, and you, you know we moved on. Twenty twenty changed how we do our business, um, and, and some good, some bad, but it's changed how we focus our business. So people have moved from that traditional, uh, I need my my desktop, my computer, to to mobile, and. You know, there are now 3.2 million users that are using QuickBooks Online, and it keeps growing every year. This is as of 2021, um, and the numbers keep growing. You know, back in 2017, this number was at about just under 1.8 million. So it's grown, you know, significantly over the years, and it's going to keep growing. And the system, like I said, has really kept pace with changes in technology. So just some benefits, it's cloud-based, um, it's mobile-friendly. Um, the changes that you make are real-time. Um, it's hosted by, uh, into its uh, secure server. There's, they say it's 128 uh, encryption. So they say it's, they say it's safe. Um, have I, I've been using it you know, for, at least 10 years, you know, QuickBook varying versions of QuickBooks Online for about 10 years. And it has, you know, been safe, it's been secure. Um, you know, the, the one big problem I found with QuickBooks Online over the years is from time to time their servers go down, but they only go down for maybe about a half an hour or an hour at most, but and very, very, very infrequently. That's the one little downside. So their their run their uptime is over ninety nine percent. So it's it's safe, it's secure, and it's pretty, it's always there when you need it. Um, and they have some they have a lot of uh, because it's the leading system out there online for small businesses. They have a lot of uh, they have an ecosystem similar to your iPhone, your Android. Um, so they have, if there's a service or product that QuickBooks doesn't provide, they have a third-party app that will um, you'll be able to find it. Um, they have some other features in there that it's kind of a um, augmented reality, not augmented reality, a artificial intelligence. 
um, you know, AI system in there to help track how you enter your data into the system and memorizes certain transactions based on name, based on um, information that gets entered into it. So it helps you speed up your data entry um, through memorizing and predicting what certain vendors and um, you have. Um, there's no, you don't have to maintain your own separate network. You just, like I said, need internet connection. Um, you don't need to upgrade or back up. So you don't have to have a server. You don't have to have an IT department. Um, so a lot of that expense goes away. You don't, you don't need to worry about, do I have the latest and the greatest? Because when new features get pushed, uh, developed, they get pushed through. Um, so those are kind of, you know, if, very good for small businesses because, you know, if you don't need to hire an IT department to store and maintain the system, you know, you pay the, the, the fee and all of that is included. Um, some other benefits, like I mentioned, are workflow benefits. So how does it make things um, better for you? Um, so as I mentioned, you know, you get to uh, attach customer information, customer invoices and vendor invoices to QuickBooks so that if you're to a specific transaction. So if you create an invoice for a customer, um, you can attach um, receipts if you're billing back to them. So this way, when you're when the customer wants to know why be they being charged for something, you can pull up the receipt that you're billing back. The same thing for a vendor. If you're paying a vendor, um, when you enter that vendor information to the system, you get to add a copy of that vendor uh, invoice to the system. Um, so this way, down the road, if you forget why you paid something, you can look it up and say, oh, now here's the proof. Um, you can uh, create a function where if you have a regularly scheduled retainer for a customer that happens on the first of the month or the 15th of the month or the last day of the month, you can set up a transaction that will allow you to um, automatically create and send that customer your invoice. Um, uh, you know, you can connect um, your QuickBooks uh, to your bank account, your financial institution, your credit card to import transactions. So you don't have to remember um, what you spent. The system every day updates and pulls in new transactions. I'll show you in the banking activity uh, how that looks and how that works. Um, and we, you know, to see how that speeds up the process. Um, you can, you know, uh, send reports to if you have partners, if you have maybe someone who is looking to invest in your business and you want to share some financial reports or data with somebody, you can do that. Your accountant, you can have them, you can send reports to them. Um, or if you have a management team, if you have a, you're part of a board, you know, nonprofits have a lot of you know, have board members, um, you can set up QuickBooks to issue monthly reports to those board members. Um, and one of the other features is that QuickBooks um, has what they call an audit log. So it, you can track uh, who did what, when, uh, what, where, when, and how. So if someone um, on your team, you know, uh, you can restrict um, who sees what and responsibilities to QuickBooks, but sometimes, you know, someone might make a mistake, um, you know, and, and delete a transaction that they weren't supposed to. Um, and you go to reconcile your bank accounts and you're off. You know, you can go to the audit trail and say, what happened? Why am I off? And find, you know, what happened? Who did it and why? You know, so, you know sometimes it's inadvertent. Sometimes, you know, um, carelessness, people are just, you know, not paying attention. Um, so this is, it's a nice little feature just to keep tabs on what's happening, especially if you're not the only person working on your system. Um, so these are just some important um, menu options that you're gonna see throughout the presentation. Um, and so there's a couple of different sets of them and you'll see them. I'll I'm gonna be referring back to these um, menu options um, throughout the presentation so you can see. Um, 
there is just for you if you want to follow along um, or practice if you don't have quickbooks online you want to practice um, quickbooks has what they call um A, a test uh, test drive uh, system. So, um, if you go to intuit.com uh, slash uh, test drive, it brings up this uh, Craig's uh, design and landscaping service. So it's just a system where you can go in and play around uh, to you know play around with it and. Just to see how it works. Now, I'll, I'll touch base. I'm going to uh, just flip back and forth into that a little later on uh, when I, for a couple of different uh, live demonstrations, as it, as it were. So, uh, this is your basic dashboard view. Um, as you can see, you have columns on, on your left, uh, which is um, where you find most of your activity. Um, the box up on the upper right hand corner. Um, and then you have in the center, you have your menus to do specific transactions. So if you want to um, manage customers, create an estimate, send an invoice, um, review transactions, uh, pay bills, et cetera, you can click on any one of those circles and you can um, take care of what you want to take care of. So th the first thing we're going to start off with is the um, the gear icon menu, which is in the upper right hand corner. Uh, this is one, of, this is the place you go in the beginning, you know, to set up your QuickBooks online, um, you to, to, to set up your account and your settings, you manage your users, um, you want to do your chart of accounts, um, other tools such as setting up you know, uh, products and lists. So if you have uh, a retail store and you don't you want to track um, by certain products or services that you sell, you can come over here and set those up under products and lists. Um, your recurring transactions, you can come over here and take care of this. Um, importing data into QuickBooks under tools, uh, reconciling your bank account, um, budgeting if you if you have the plus um, uh, subscription. You can create budgets. Um, I mentioned about the audit log. This is where you can find your audit log. Um, and if you have, um, you know, you can check your Intuit account. You can check your, uh, you know, refer a friend. Or if you have multiple companies, you could switch uh, the companies from here. Uh, the next one is your these are your navigation bars. So you have your, your help, your help similar to help in any other, um, you know, Microsoft Office type of, uh, you know, Excel, Word, they all have help. So you can go in there and just type in certain queries or type in things that you don't, you know, you, you're not sure of. And you can go to the you know, QuickBooks community. Uh, you can, it'll give you some, links to go to you know find certain things that you might be asking for. Um, your notifications so if there's any push through notifications anything that quickbooks um, specific you know did you receive payments um, do you have any outstanding uh, overdue bills some of these things pop up in the notifications and then your search which is um, can offer a lot so search can give you um, a, a view into things that you have that's happened in the past. So this over in the left hand corner over here, um, this little clock, you know, kind of just tells you, you know, past transactions. So these it pulls up a list of recent transactions that you might have gone. So if you want to find something really quick, maybe you did something the other day, you can find a transaction, pull it up, and see what's there. You can type into the search bar. Um, and if you want to find a specific transaction, you want to find a specific vendor, you can type that in here and it gives you, um, pulls up the information related to that. And then they have what they call an advanced search feature, which here allows you to search by, um, by name, by amount, by specific vendor, 
um, by date. So it, it pulls up all those specifically to that, um, that criteria. The next option is in the upper, uh, down in the upper left-hand corner, it's your new menu option. This is where you come in to, if you want to start, well, you'll, you'll see that there are multiple ways of doing some certain things. This is the most easy and straightforward way to do, uh, you know, create, adding a new vendor, adding a new invoice, receiving payments, um, issuing refunds to customers. Um, if you want to uh, enter a credit card transaction or a debit card transaction, you come to vendors and go to expenses. You can write checks to customers. You can, if you have um, the essentials or the plus, uh, you have the accounts payable feature. So you can enter bills to pay at a later time and to pay your bills um, and print your checks. If you have employees, you can, and you have um, payroll services through into it, you can run your payroll and you have uh, more of your typical accounting features such as um, doing transfers between accounts, bank, uh, bank deposits. If you, you know, people, you know, still people use uh, checks, even though more and more people are using um, uh, credit card payments and things of that nature. But if you have still people give you checks, you know, to record those checks into QuickBooks, you have, you have your bank deposits, you have your journal entries, et cetera. Um, and then you have your left navigation bar. Um, and here, this is kind of where um, we spend, I spend most of my days in, in these section, this section right over here. Um, and I'll, I'll go through some of the features about how this works. Um, so um, this is just kind of a quick note to those that if you have the desktop version of QuickBooks um, and you decide that you're, you want to um, free yourself of the, you know, the desktop version and the, and the fixed dedicated uh, system, you can upload your QuickBooks um, data to QuickBooks Online. Um, and by doing that, you can either start the process from your QuickBooks um, desktop uh, version into QuickBooks Online or from QuickBooks Online and you have an extract, extracted file from um, QuickBooks desktop, you can upload, you can import your data into uh, QuickBooks Online from here. Um, the nice feature about this is that it brings over um, all of the activity, um, the customers, invoices, um, everything that you had in the old system that brings it up. The only thing it doesn't do, if you had custom made uh, invoicing, um, those invoices don't import, so you're gonna have to kind of reset those up, but um, at least the, the basic data will be there. So it's a nice little feature. And again, this is something that in, when you talk to your pro advisor or to your accountant, or whoever you uh, use to get the right QuickBooks online for you, they'll help you go through this process. So setting up your QuickBooks online, your company file, as I mentioned before, up in, up in the gear icon, uh, when we talked about um, the setting up the company under the accountant accounts and settings screen, you have this, these sub um, categories. So this is kind of where you go to get, get started. So company setup, this is where you choose your, how you set up your company name. If you have a logo, you can upload the logo, you can choose, tell what kind of company structure you are, sole proprietor, LLC, S Corp, C Corp, uh, nonprofit, et cetera. Um, your company contact information, your address. Um, these notes are in the um, presentation we sent you 
So it just kind of walks you through just some of the, what each of those functions do. Um, what I will note, just so you know, is when you get to this thing, anytime you see this little pencil mark next to it, that just means that you can click on this button and you'll be able to edit any, any of this information. So um, if you um, move you know, your address, you, location, you just come over here and enter the information. Um, so again, this is just kind of a look, like I said, this is the view once you clicked on the pencil. So it comes in here and allows you to enter your information and click and save. Um, again, just another view, the address, um, you can set it up, um, the customer facing address and the, versus the legal address. If you have, if you have an office space, but you do most of your your, your business is registered to your home address, you can make that distinction, but the customers will only see the company address. Um, the billing setup. The billing setup is how you choose your subscription level. Um, you can come in here and you can uh, cancel, update, switch from monthly to annual. There are certain savings when you do that. Um, and you can change your the payment history. Um, because uh, QuickBooks Online is a subscription based, there are subscriptions for every component that you want to add. So there's the QuickBooks Online. If you want it, if you have employees and you don't have a third party um, payroll provider, uh, you can get into a payroll, you know, for a subscription, you know, well, in this case, um, it's 1950 plus $2 for, per employee. Uh, per month. So um, you have that, and then you have your payment subscriptions so that you can use, um, you can click, you can add a pay now function when you send out invoices so that you can um, receive payments uh, from your customers. There is a subscription. You also have to be a, um, you have to have a valid social security and be a, um, a US citizen uh, because it, goes through the payment systems and payment systems require um, you to input your information, social security address, so they can verify who you are um, because they're, you know, they're dealing with financial institutions. Um, and then um, if you still are in a habit of using checks, which a lot of people, which a lot of people still are, um, there are um, a function now to click here on order. Um, for what it's worth, I am, like I said, because I'm a pro advisor, I do get certain discounts on um, supplies and subscription levels, et cetera. So if anyone is interested at some point in talking to me about that, we can, I can uh, gladly share some, some, some of the savings with you. So um, just keep that in mind. Um, this is just setting up your customer, your, your customer invoice. Like I mentioned, whether it's brand new or you're importing, um, you need to set up your customer information, your, your customer invoice, uh, invoices and how you want your systems to, to be managed. So your fields, your shipping, custom fields, uh, service dates, depending on the type of business you have. You can, um, if you give discounts to customers, you can have that feature on so that you can give your customers a fixed or a percentage discount. Um, if you have products and services and you want to do very ge general um, inventory, you can set up your, you can allow the, system, allow the system to help you track your inventory, um, but just be aware that this is a very basic um, inventory system. So if you need anything more advanced or you have multiple locations or different types of products or needs, you might have to go into a different system or get the QuickBooks point of sales, which integ integrates with QuickBooks Online. Um, you can set up reminders, uh, messages, uh, and statements if you want to issue to your customers. Um, here we're talking about how you set up your invoices 
the different um, faces of your of your invoice, the layout. If you want to add your uh, you know the, the name, your address, uh, the bill to the ship to the invoice number. Um, if you have terms, you can add the terms here. Um, your logo. Uh, if you have to collect sales tax, you can add the different uh, levels you need to add the um, lines for sales tax. Uh, change your colors, um, your fonts, the width. So a lot of different headers and custom headers and features. Um, the content, if you need to change the look and the feel, uh, who to email, who to contact, um, form numbers, type of names. Um, these, this is where you come in and do that. Um, some additional content and descriptions that you can change, move column, you, know, you can move columns around, you can. Um, for your description, SKUs, etc. These little bars allow you to move things and place them in the, in the position that is right for you. Um, some additional information on content, um, your messaging on the bottom, and you can change it. But this is universal. So if you need something specific to a specific customer, you have that option as well. Um, that's where you can do when you add a footer. Um, otherwise, you can just say, you know, uh, thank you for your business if you want to have a general uh, to go to all your customers. Um, expense setup, that's just allowing you to just set up your bills, et cetera. Um, your customers, pretty straightforward. You want to track by class or item. Select on and off. Um, and I'll tell you about class in a minute. Uh, payment setup, as I mentioned, this is how you can track uh, the information, you, you know, the payments you receive. You can come into uh, and track who get who sends you what. I just want to see if um, in the test drive if they have. They don't have payment in cash cash. Um, but this is where you can go in and see who, who paid what. This system, any payments that come through here and you have an invoice created for this individual, for that customer, um, once the payment posts, QuickBooks will match that automatically for you. Time tracking, this is just, if you have timesheets, and also very basic allows you to set up the days of the week. Most people, you know, have uh, work weeks. And so Monday is the first day. Some people have um, Saturday to Saturday, Sunday to Sunday, Tuesday to Tuesday. Um, whatever works best for you and your work schedule, um, you can change that to be. But most people are, you know, typical Monday through Friday. And advanced setups, um, this is mainly with the help of your, your accountant but it's uh, the cal uh, how do you file your taxes most people are on a calendar so you set up a calendar uh, most of, some people are cash or accrual that's just the method in which you report um, close books um, if at the end of every year at, you know at the very least um, once everything is said and done and you want to be able to lock your periods in this way you don't adjust and affect prior years because then that throws off your taxes come the following year. So this is something that a lot of people don't use, but uh, a lot of people should. Um, this is the features of track chart of accounts, different categories, classes, locations, aut automation helps you uh, remember transactions. So when you enter a vendor or customer or whatever, you pull up that um, information it gives you the last transaction that you use and you can just calculate from that. Um, and if you have multiple currencies or um, 
you can use you can turn it over here. Most people only have US dollars, so a lot of people don't need that. Um, and again, some additional notes on how classes work, just a touch on class. That just helps you uh, what they call it, it's what they call a dimension. So instead of just tracking expenses um, in terms of chart of accounts, you know, um, bank fees, legal fees, et cetera, classes let you track if you have uh, different people working on different products, if you have salespeople, or if you have different locations, or if you have different um, offices, you know, and maybe you're, you have multiple restaurants or multiple stores, you can track each each store or location could be a class, and you can track um, based on that, and that just helps you identify not just in, in total how everything is doing, but you can see how everything is doing with certain pieces. And it makes you, gives you better insight into your uh, QuickBooks, into your numbers. Um, manage users, as I mentioned, is just where you can select who you have, whether it's the, the user, employees, or your accounting firm. The information is the same. You can, uh, you the name, address, email address and what restrictions you want them to see, you know, full use, partial use, reports, bookkeeping. Um, you come in to manage users and you can edit what you, who you set up and how, how what they could say. Um, chart of accounts, I'm just going to jump into here um, and show you chart of accounts. Um, this is your chart of accounts. I hope everyone can see my screen. Um, so chart of accounts is set up to uh, help you understand your business. So just a quick about accounting, it's set up in, in accounting format. So it starts with your um, balance sheet items, um, your, your assets and your liabilities, and then your um, income statement. Um, so you would see such things as your, your, bank, your bank accounts, your accounts receivable, inventory. It gives you a quick look at what is in there at the moment. Maybe that's right. Maybe you finished reconciling. Maybe you haven't made the certain deposits or written certain checks. So this amount is just static at that moment. Um, if you have credit cards, um, and then it goes down into your income, in your uh, income, and your expenses. Um, if you you can edit the transaction, you can. Uh, this is you know if you want to change the name, um, make it a sub account of something. If you want to group certain accounts together, so if you have um, you know certain income items that you want to group together, you can, or you have certain expense accounts that you want to group together, you can make them sub accounts, put them together. This way you can find things more, more easily and keeps, you know, keeps your uh, QuickBooks cleaner. Um, uh, if you want to run a quick report on a, on a given item, you could just see, oh, how much did I spend um, this month? you know, this year uh, or any one of these categories, you know, all dates today, this week, this month, you can run reports and they'll show you um, what transactions went into that category. And then you can go one step further and you can see the lowest level of detail, which in this case is the inverse. Um, and, you know, whether or not you know, this invoice has been paid and not paid, uh, when did you send it out? Um, do, you, do you need to edit it? You can if you want, or if you, you know, if it's still active, um, you can make those changes and it flows right through. Um, if you need to add a new um, type of account, um, a new customer account, a new bank account, a new um, you, know, you, you took a loan out, you took a you know, line of credit or something, um, you wanna add that into the system. So you have to come in here, select the type that of account that you're setting up. 
because this way it falls appropriately in the right spot in, in QuickBooks. Um, and for when your, your accountant does your uh, taxes, you can um, put the name of what you want, want it to be called. And whether, like I said, whether you're going to be grouping this into something, um, you know, specific that you want. Uh, detail type is, it's, it's supposed to be a, a refinement of how granular you can go in terms of what this bank account is for, in a sense. You know, is it just cash? Is it, is it checking? Is it money market? Is it, you know, um, so, um, Sometimes I use this, sometimes I don't. Most of the time I just choose, I just keep them all the same because in order to group things together, you have to keep them the same. Um, but sometimes some of these categories don't fit what I need. So I just kind of make it generic. Um, you save and you close. Um, and as you can see, it pops up. So now there's nothing in there, but you now can start to use um, that system, okay? Um, and if you want to, um, see what the register looks like, this is, will show you all the activity, even though there's nothing in here. So this is kind of what your, your check register would look like in QuickBooks, typical to any paper, uh, register you ever, you've used in the past. Um, so that's about um, some of the points I just mentioned. Um, your tools menu. Um, um, this is, like I mentioned, some of the advanced tools you can use. And as I indicated, if you want to do budgeting, um, you would require QBO Plus. But uh, for this purpose, I'm not going to get into that because beyond the scope of this, but just so you know what to use. Um, so we really always want to kind of move along because just kind of get to the um, vendors and customer section. Um, so just plan why, the, 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 it's important just to plan properly. If you set, if you choose the right system, you set it up properly, um, it makes it you user friendly come to, you know, down the road. Because once you start entering data in and you realize, oh, I should have done this, or I should have done that, it's hard to go back and undo what you did to get to where you want to be. So um, plan wisely, talk to a trusted advisor when it comes to how QuickBooks is used and it makes the process that much easier. So the lists, I'll show you. Uh, talk to you about that, but they help you track your customers, your vendors, your employees, your products, your services, so that um, you find what you're looking for um, and you can uh, run the reports into the data the way you need to use it. Um, so you have your center, your center lists, your centers and your other lists. So the other lists I mentioned were really in this section right over here. Um, and you have your centers, which is this uh, menu bar that's on the left-hand side of the screen. So this is kind of where you spend most of your days. Um, and today we're going to focus on just sales and um, expenses. Um, here you just have an overview of your customers, how to set them up, how to create invoices, create lists and deposits, um, and your expenses, adding vendors and, and adding bills and paying bills. So your customer view, you, once you click on um, your sales, you have your customer view. Here you have the list of all your customers, um, what's outstanding, what's unpaid, what's been paid. Um, you can change this as much as you want. You have your new customers. Um, Anthony. Yep. Before, before you get into the, the further, there are a couple of questions that uh, need to be cleared up for some people. Sure. And I want to make sure that they understand it before we go any further, okay? Sure. Um, first is, uh, you know, does the QuickBooks desktop work on MacBook or iPad? 
Um, so QuickBooks Desktop, um, there's two versions of QuickBooks Desktop. There's the uh, Microsoft uh, version, I guess, um, and then there's the Apple version. There are two separate and distinct um, desktop versions. So you, you have to buy, the if you have an Apple product, uh, MacBook Pro or um, something along those lines, you have to buy the Mac version of QuickBooks. If you have QuickBooks online, it doesn't matter what version of computer you have, you just need to have um, internet access. So QuickBooks online works across all platforms. Okay, thank you. And, and what's the difference between QuickBooks self-employed and Quicken? Uh, Quicken is, is another Intuit um, product. Um, Quicken is probably they're in QuickBooks self-employed and Quick and Quicken are about the same. Um, it's just Quicken is just more of a. I don't really use Quicken that much because it. I don't find it as user friendly as QuickBooks. Um, so, but Quicken, well, I would see that QuickBooks winds up providing them with some additional reporting. Yeah. With some ordered information. Uh, additional reporting type of uh, that yes. they may not get in Quicken. I think those are the real differences that you yeah. find. And, and it's a different setup. It's a different look and feel altogether. Um, it's it's a basic kind of, uh, I just need to track my expenses kind of a, a feature, um, you know, and people love it and that, you know, uh, but I'm not really familiar too much with, with Quicken uh, other than my, casual use. So I wish I can give you a little bit more of a definitive answer when it comes to that. Okay, the other thing is um, essentials. It uh, it can do uh, accrual basis reports, am I correct? Yes, it can do, it can do accrual basis reports. Um, it's just uh, in terms of the number of users that it has, um, so it, it's the, that's the biggest thing, um, and whether or not you you have um, accounts payable and accounts receivable or just accounts receivable. I think this uh, this question is a little mixed up. Person is a little confused here. What is the difference between online versus downloading to the computer? Um, I think that they're confusing this with um, uh, downloading the information from your computer to uh, online. Yeah, so um, it, it's an online system. Maybe it, um, the confusion might be you can connect your, um, your banking information to, to QuickBooks and it downloads into QuickBooks or imports into QuickBooks Online. So if you have you know, your bank or your credit card, you can connect the information and the information gets imported into QuickBooks Online. Um, there's, no, there's no downloading of any data <coughs> from QuickBooks Online to your desktop, unless you, you know, wanna run, use Excel and you wanna download an Excel report to QuickBooks Online, I mean, to your desktop from QuickBooks. But otherwise, there's no need to download any information. It's just the connection. Maybe, maybe they're referring to the connection between the bank, financial institution, and QuickBooks. All right. Um, two other questions at this point, and then you can continue, let you continue. Um, QuickBooks Online uh, doesn't have a line for discounts by percentages, or does it? It does. It does. Yeah, you can um, you can set up percentage either dollar amount or or by, by percent. Okay, thank you. And um, this person is a little concerned that with time running the way it is, she hopes that uh, you would be able to uh, talk about the more about the chart of accounts on how to enter data accurately. Yep. Understanding that debit and credit side of the journal entry. Uh, yeah, I, I can show some um, 
I can go into the um, yeah, I can take a I can I can go into test drive and show them how to do some of the stuff in test drive. Um, and it'll they'll see kind of the same process I was going to go through. All right. So with that said, so I was going to, I just flipped over to test drive. Um, so I hope everyone can see this. Um, so we were talking about the sales. Um, here's your sales overview. Um, you can see all sales. Um, in this case, this is like a live view of test drive. Um, and you can see if you have any estimates open, um, and an estimate and an invoice are, are different. And that an estimate is just to give someone an idea of what the price is gonna be. And then once you settle on the price, you can convert that estimate to an invoice, an actual invoice and send it out. Um, this shows you kind of what's outstanding, um, open, um, open invoices versus overdue invoices, and then what's been paid. Um, and then you have your, your invoice list what's been a more detailed view of what's out there, um, payments and services, which uh, we were just touching upon right now, um, and your customers. This is your customer list. So if you have a customer, you can click over here and you can see the, uh, the activity for that particular customer. You can see the address, um, you can see notes, you can edit, um, all the information related to the, the customer, um, contact, address, et cetera. Um, if you no longer use this customer, you can inactivate it. If you, if you want just to take, it, you know, doesn't delete it, but it would take it off your list, especially if you don't use them anymore. Um, um, if you don't have a customer and you need to create a new customer, um, you can, Click on new customer, add all the, the appropriate information. Um, you can make, you can group customers. Like, you know, if you have a hierarchy, so if you have one customer and you have multiple jobs, or you have one parent company and multiple companies beneath that, um, you can categorize that and group all that stuff um, together just to make things easier for you to track and to see. I have a few customers that do do that. Um, and then, you can um, create an invoice, right? This is the important, this, this is the important part. Um, so you wanna create an invoice. So you have Amy Sanctuary, you have, um, you can have the person that it's going to, um, if you need to add a CC or a BCC, you can add that over here and you know, put that in there, um, save it this way, it's always there. Or if it changes every time you can change that. Um, you can have the address, and here you have the question of products and services. So in this case, they have concrete, and they have, you can have a quantity, you can have a rate, and you can have a um, an amount. Obviously, uh, QuickBooks does all the calculations for you. So if I add two, box, two, two it multiplies that by, by 10, then I get 20. If you have sales tax or you don't have sales tax, um, if you have discount percentage, see over here. Um, okay, I can put a percentage in there um, and it would deduct the, um, the $2 and then charge the sales tax based on the state that I'm, I'm in. Um, you can add a new state if the state that you have is not in there. Um, or if the state is, is in there, you can go in and you can change the, uh, the amount of the sales tax for that given location if, if needed. Um, and if there is um, uh, no sales tax, you can uh, just remove the sales tax altogether. Um, as I mentioned before, this is where you have your message, your global message to everybody. And then if you have a specific message, to the customer. So um, that's kind of a 
Yeah, All right, ahead. Anthony. Yep. Um, uh, time wise, we have about 15 minutes. Okay. Uh, maybe you can proceed. And uh, I know there's a, there's a lot of slides that are here, um, but maybe we can uh, spend a little more time or uh, dealing with um, uh, journal entries. How yep. do you get? Uh, how do you uh, take care of uh, cash downloads from the banks? Yep. Okay, I'll um, jump. I'll jump to that really those, quick. Those items. Okay. They have a copy of the slides, okay. so they could look at them. They can okay. get a copy of the recording, but they can't hear it unless uh, we get to those items. Up. Okay. So, um, so now you, yeah. So this is kind of. So now you're just going to save and close this, um, and then um, we're going to go here and to your to your. So to your new button up on the top, and we're gonna do a uh, receive payment, okay? So here, this is just why it's important. So Amy's Bird Sanctuary has an invoice. So we're gonna receive this payment and you have a choice of where we're gonna, where we're gonna put this, but I'll just show you really quick. Um, we're putting it in undeposited funds for a moment. We receive the payment the amount, the date, et cetera, you save and close. Um, why do they put it in the deposited funds? Because um, we want to make a bank deposit, okay? So bank deposits, this is where if you have multiple companies, multiple deposits, you want to group deposits to match your bank account. You go to a bank- Anthony, and you if you have some slides that show this, so maybe you want to advance to those slides. Okay, do you see, um, what screen are you seeing? You're not seeing my screen over the here? The only slide we see up here at the present time is customer overview screen. Uh, we, so you don't see my screen that says, um, uh, you don't see the, the web page that I'm on for? Um, no. Okay, hold on one second. You see it now? Yes. Okay. So let me just back up really quick. So we entered the uh, invoice for Amy's um, sanctuary. This is Amy's sanctuary. I received the payment for Amy's sanctuary here, and I put it to an account called undeposited funds so that I can see um, why, if, so I can receive the payment. Why do I put it to undeposited funds? Because when you come to the home screen, when you go to your plus and you go to bank deposits, these are all my deposits. I can either make a deposit, a general deposit down here, or I can find a deposit that I made. Your bank account, when you look at your bank account, your bank account, your bank statement shows a lump sum number. So if you deposit one check or 10 checks, the bank, the bank screen only shows one number. So when you do, QuickBooks, the way QuickBooks does that is if I have multiple deposits in one day, I can select the deposits that I want that match that day's deposits. I select the account that I want it to go to, the date that I made my deposit, and I record that deposit. So now if you go, if I go to my chart of accounts, and I go to my checking account, that deposit that I made comes right over here. So now this deposit matches what's in your bank account. And when you reconcile your accounts, it will be important. Um, so the same thing happens when you do your, your vendors. You have your vendor screen, Right, same same look, same feel as your uh, customers. If I want to add a new vendor, I click on my new vendor screen. Um, if I want to pay a bill, I can create a bill, create an expense, uh, purchase order, make an active, et cetera, or write a check. So if I write a check, 
Bob's Burger Joint. I can choose my account. Let's just say it's meals. Put my amount, in dollars. Um, now, no, just notice over here when I said about we talked about tracking and classes and uh, being able to track different things. If this meal was because I took a customer out for lunch, I can make this billable back to the customer and I can choose my customer that I uh, took out to lunch or, or I did work for or whatever. I can save and I can close. And if I go back to my chart of accounts, I uh, go back to my vendor and I see my transaction that I deposited $2,000 and I spent $100 at um, Bob's Burger Joint. Um, you can also enter expenses over here, same thing, check. Um, if I want to uh, books by Bessie, I can write a check. Um, I can set the check to print to later. I can write her a check. And notice what I said to you before about QuickBooks uh, coming to you and like pulling up prior transactions to make things easier for me. So legal and professional bookkeeper, um, and she charges $55. So if that's the same thing, yes or no, I can, but I can always change it. I can save and close. Um, and I said to you, um, so now I've entered some activity into my checking account. So under banking, which I will get, it's in the presentation, but I'll get to you later. Banking is connected. So when you connect your bank, if you want to link, just so I understand, you can come over here, click link, find your institution. But you can come over here, you can link your bank account um, and log in the same way you would log in on your own online access and it gets there. Um, these boxes connect. So you have your checking account, your savings account, and your MasterCard account. See how it says updated moments ago. Um, it pulls in whatever information has posted to your bank account. So if something's pending on your bank account, it won't show up here. But once it clears and posts to your bank account, it shows up over here. And what comes up is this activity. So you can um, come down the list. Um, and it gives you the opportunity to make sure that this information gets recorded to the right spot. So Bessie's books, um, it's coming up as uncategorized, don't know why. So I can click on the, the transaction. I can say, no, this is my, uh, was it legal and professional? Okay. And what I can do is I can create a rule, call it uh, bookkeeping. Uh, as long as the description contains books by Bessie, or I can, whatever I want to have it done, um, it's going to go to which account is it going to go to? Um, category and payee. I click and I can have it automatically. Uh, post this information, or I don't like this feature because just in case something changes from time to time, I take that auto auto add off. I click save. Now I can, you can see how it says rule. I can add that rule to my bank account. The same thing here. Anytime you see un uncategorized income, it's because QuickBooks doesn't recognize it. So you can come in here, you could set it up, and you could just type in the um, a1 rental. If it doesn't recognize it, you can automatically save it. And it's now in the system. Automatic rental, I don't know, let's say it's equipment rental. You can click the account that you want. And if you want to create the rule, you can create a rule for it. Or if not, you can just click add. So you go through each one and you, this is your opportunity to make sure that all your deposits are in 
and go into the right spot, all of your expenses are going to the right spot. Where it says match, that just means that it's in the system, it found it already, and it's just telling you that all you need to do is match it. So if you have a deposit, like we made that deposit for $2,000, once it clears the bank, it's already in the, in the QuickBooks, Quick, the bank will pull it through and we will match it. And you just keep going down the list until you enter all your transactions for that given month or period. Um, and this handles all both um, payables, I mean, deposits and expenses. Um, when you're done with that, you, you say, I'm happy. I go up to my gear icon. I go to reconcile. It's gonna tell you match the books, you get started. Um, this has already been taken care of. So we just say, let's do it. We choose the account that you want to reconcile, the, the ending balance, I don't know what it is. So this just matches whatever is on your bank statement. So I'm just gonna put hundred dollars in. Your ending date would be the ending date of the statement. So you can reconcile technically your accounts every day if you want. I, recon I, I officially reconcile every month, but I, I, I go in once a week and I just reconcile to that date. So I always know that my bank balance matches. Um, so I just, once I get to that, um, this is your reconciliation screen. Um, assuming everything is done correctly, uh, this process takes no time. But um, very rarely is the case that that happens, but it, it does. Um, the process we went through a moment ago with um, the bank transactions and, and matching and entering, see these check marks here? And this, this green little box here, this means that it was added from that banking screen. So these items we know are already in that month and our bank activity. So QuickBooks is helping us along the way and telling us by putting these check marks. So we don't have to check these off. So the rest of the time, you just have to go through your bank, um, your bank balance, your bank statement, and one by one, um, you check off the boxes until this difference becomes zero. Um, what I like to do is you have these three buttons here, you have payments, deposits, and all. Um, I like to do one by one. So I focus on my deposits since they come first on the bank statement. I check off all my deposits. I make sure that my um, deposits here matches what's on my bank statement. And then similarly, I do the same thing for, um, notice how you change, you know, you keep going down the list and notice how that number keeps changing. Um, and it's entirely possible that this is where you find your, this is where you find errors if you made any along the process. Um, did you, uh, enter a check amount in, in the wrong amount. Um, you know, QuickBooks, um, you might have entered the wrong amount in QuickBooks, but the the bank has, you know, you wrote a check out to somebody and somehow it cleared for a different amount. Um, or um, there was, you, en you duplicated an entry. So I entered two checks into QuickBooks twice inadvertently. Um, or, there's outright out and out fraud. You know, um, someone's hacked into your account and transactions are coming in that you had no idea about. Um, so this is kind of the process where you get to go through and fix it. Once this account gets to zero, um, you can finish and you finish and save. Um, if you don't, if you want to make, if you need to make a quick change, whether it's a deposit or a debit. You can click on here, edit the transaction, and fix whatever you have to fix. Maybe you need to move it to a different account. Maybe you need to split it between um, 
uh, auto, or, or, you know, automobile maintenance and fuel. Um, something nice about QuickBooks. Um, if this is $5, you can do math in QuickBooks if you don't want to do it manually. So I can do add, subtract, multiply, and divide. So I can, you know, you can do that no matter what type of, uh, whether you're doing setting up a customer in, invoice or vendor invoice, it doesn't matter. Um, you can add, subtract, multiply, and divide in a cell like you can in Excel. Um, so that's that's the the reconciliation process. Um, we talked about um, receiving payments, creating invoices, um, creating expenses. We set up some checks before to pay later. So you you know you don't just print. I don't just print checks. I don't just create a check, print it, create a check, print it. I just create a slew of checks and then print later. So under the new button, uh, print checks. Um, here you can choose the type of checks that you have, three to a page, one, uh, three part checks, whichever works for you. The setup is done. Here's the, the list of checks that um, the system is ready to print. Um, you can select all or you can select um, one. Um, you can you can print your checks. Uh, let's see. Uh, this is the list of checks that you are getting ready to do. And then when you want to print the checks, you click on print. There's a, there will be a list of checks here. Um, you put your starting check number in, and uh, however many checks are here, it automatically um, prints them and assigns the check numbers in QuickBooks Online. Um, so uh, that's kind of what I wanted to talk about for those two. Um, items. Um, we talked about the banking. This The banking is important. Um, like I said, as long as you have um, your, your transactions, this is your go-to every day. Um, you can change your, you can change your edit, your rules here by just clicking um, edit. You can change it. You can Put it on auto. You can take it off of auto, etc. Um, payroll again. If you have options with payroll, you can um, you can run payroll, check your employees, etc. Um, reports. Just kind of touching quickly upon this. Um, this is your list of reports. Uh, you have your favorites. Notice the little stars next to each one. You can. Add, add or remove favorites as you go along. Um, this is your typical um, profit and loss. You can look at it on a accrual basis, a cash basis. You can look at it on month, monthly. Um, you can change how you, want it, how, how you want to view it. You can go back in time. You can look at all months. Um, you can, if you want to see transactions, um, you can click on each individual transaction. It tells you how many transactions you had in a day, a month, a year. And then again, you go down to the lowest level. Um, these are the ones that you're going to use for, you know, the balance sheet and your PL are the ones you're going to be using the most of. Each one, um, again, does the same thing. You change it to your time periods. Um, and you can run a report um, on the, whatever level you want to to see. Um, we talked about mileage. You could track. Well, this is kind of where you would go. I don't want me to do that. Um, but this is how you would track your mileage if you want to track your mileage. 
this is something that you would Anthony, we were uh, kind of optimistic that we could get all of this material covered in the time yeah, that, we had, that. that it was said. Um, I know that uh, you've, you've said that um, whoever attended this session can contact you with any particular questions that they have, and you would be more than happy to guide them through. So, yeah, uh, absolutely. Your, yeah, I apologize. Your yeah, I guess it went a little longer than I had anticipated your, but... your information is here so that they could to contact you yep. um, but however before we before we end this uh, session uh, to continue with the uh, cash uh, income and, and what have you yep. uh, maybe you can just um, go through uh, downloading uh, uh, statement bank statement information and credit card information and uh, Let's see if we could if we can get that done in a short period of time. Yeah. Okay, hold on one second. Let me just get back in. Okay, to... I appreciate everybody hanging in there for a while. Uh, I think you're going to find this all very informative. You've all received a copy of the uh, slides. You can go through those slides, and it may answer your questions uh, concerning the areas that uh, Anthony has not touched base on. Uh, but if you have any particular questions that you need to have answered, uh, please feel free to contact them. He would be more than happy to. Uh, I'm speaking for him now because he's asked me to. In a sense, he'd be more than happy to answer your questions. Okay. Um, so just in terms of banking, um, so this is kind of the is this the screen that you were talking about in terms of you want to kind of see. Um, so the QuickBooks um, kind of tie things together in like two minutes here. Um, your basic screen, if you're just looking to do invoicing, if you're looking to do paying customers, uh, paying vendors, making, making entries, et cetera, this is your go-to screen. So you have your plus screen, your new screen, and you can, like I said, you can create a customer invoice like we did um, and your products and services. Um, you can write a check um, to print on the go, or let's just say you manually wrote a check to somebody because you had to give a vendor a check on the spot. You can either you can put that information in here or you can set the print later. Um, you have expenses, so if you use debit cards or credit cards <coughs> and you just want to enter one transaction at a time, this is kind of where you go. If you have a vendor bill that you get, but you, you, know, you, you pay them later on, you come to your bill, your bill, you enter your, your vendor information, uh, when it, what, what's the date of the bill and when it's due. And the system tracks it for you from there. And then you can save and schedule a payment or you can save and schedule later. Um, if you notice, just one thing you should notice is all these screens look and feel the same way. It's just a matter of how QuickBooks handles it internally. There's no need to worry about the, the double-sided accounting. QuickBooks does that for you. Um, so if you want to pay a bill that you've entered for a vendor, um, you have your pay bill. So you come over here, you can select your, your, your payee, enter the amount and schedule, schedule the payment online or write, or um, have, you know, have the check written manually. Um, you choose the account 
that you want the check to go to. Your, chart, your starting check number, you can either print it out first or print it out later. Um, and QuickBooks takes care of that for you. Um, you have your bank deposit screen, which we went to. Um, this allows you to enter the information in manually um, or select the, the deposits that you've received from a vendor. Um, I'll touch up just briefly about journal entries. Very, very few times do you use this, um, except if you're doing something like, you know, you're at the end of the year, your accountant tells you, um, I made these changes, put these journal entries based on what I gave you, and you can come in here. So it's just standard, you know, your the account you're going to be debiting or crediting your reason and the um, account you're be, you, the offsetting account. This is the only time you have to worry about uh, double sided entries, whether you have um, a check that you're moving from you know, an amount you're moving from uh, your checking account, one checking account to your savings account uh, because you forgot to record it. And your description um, to reclass. You know, um, you made a deposit to the wrong account. That's the only time you ever have to worry about um, double sided entries. Um, otherwise, QuickBooks takes care of everything. And usually, when, this, when your CPA tells you what to do. Um, but once everything is said and done and the activity has gone out and you've recorded your transactions and you recorded your deposits, made your deposits to the bank, you um, sent out checks and they've cleared, they all come, like I said, through this banking screen. Um, you can select here if you need to modify for whatever reason, your password's changed, your account, uh, you need to edit the accounting information, you can click over here. Um, if you need to, like I said, link an account, um, for some reason it's not working, but you know, you pick, pick up the account that you want and log in. Um, this is your go-to page pretty much every day to track and see what activity has come in from my bank and where does it belong. So whether you do it, whether you hire a bookkeeper to do it, whether you're well, your CPA, they don't generally like to do this. They hire someone in their office to do it for you, for them. But this is kind of where you need to go through and you should do it on a, on a routine basis. At the very least, have it done once a week. This is where you don't have too much information. As you can see here, you know, this is, has information going back to November. I know this is fake data, but I see this all too much, all too common. A lot of people don't do this or um, sometimes they don't reconcile these items properly. And this just means that in November, maybe they didn't review something and they forgot to clean up the books. So the books are either this is a duplicate, this is a duplicate, or this is erroneous or whatever. So this screen should really only have what is actually been clearing through your bank and needs to go into your, into your register. Um, and once you do that, like I said, um, you go to your chart of accounts. Um, and the balance that you see here, once you go through that, that process on a weekly basis or a daily basis, depending on how much activity you have and how busy you are, this balance up here should always be a fair representation of what you have available to you at any given time. So you don't want to go into your bank, bank statement, have your bank statement show, oh, I have $10,000 and you think, wow, I'm rich. And in reality, you've written checks that didn't clear and you really only have $1,300. So this is kind of, the, the more you stay on top of it, um, the more you can um, track your expenses, um, and make sure that you're in a good position. Um, the reconcile button is there. Um, so once you're doing all of this and you know everything is said and done, like I said, this is a good time to come over to your PL report and then just monitor 
your transactions. This you should do once a month at the very least. So that this way you know how things are tracking. Um, again, I know I, I went a little longer on the setup part of QuickBooks, um, but like, like I said, that is the most important part, I think, of QuickBooks, because if you don't set it up correctly, um, I've seen, you know, people just put um, accounts in alphabetical order and in no, in no categories, no um, groupings, and, you know, it'll be hard to find how you track. So the, 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 the better you set up a QuickBooks file, the more you follow the steps to set up a QuickBooks file, your output looks something like this so that you can track your automobile expenses by type, your job material expenses by type, your legal expenses by type, and so on. Um, so you have some type of grouping to track and make things easier for you. Um, and if you have, um, you know, a history in, in there, you can, um, you can compare to different periods. So your p and I wanna compare it to last year, um, prior year. I don't know if anything's in here to be honest with you, but this is kind of where you are. So you can look at this year versus last year, and you can see um, So you can look at this year versus last year and see where you are, your change, are you up, are you down? Um, are you making money, you're not making money? That kind of thing. So again, I, you know, I do apologize in, in the extent it took to go on that stuff, but it is important. Um, and it's, you, know, you can't just walk into a QuickBooks file and then just start working because then there's always a question. It's always, how am I doing? How much money do I have? How much did I spend on certain products, services, vendors? Um, and if you don't put the information in right to begin with, it'll be hard for you to retrieve that data. Um, so John, I hope I answered some of those questions. Um, I am available by email, phone, um, to answer any additional questions someone might have. If you wanna do a Zoom call at some point to answer some more specific questions, I'd be happy to do that as well. But thank you so much Anthony. for your time. Anthony, thank you so much. Um, and to all of the people that have stayed on with us, I want to thank you for being a part of today. Score. Um, in the package that we sent you with the uh, all of the slides, you have both Score's information for contact and Anthony's information for contact so that uh, we could help you with further questions that you may have. Anthony uh, has, uh, uh, here's, here's Anthony's information that you can see. And uh, scores is on here, is here also at the last slide. There you go, thank you. Well, everyone, I, I hope you found it informative and uh, we look forward to doing more workshops with you. There are not going to be any um, intermediate or advanced sessions of QuickBooks in the near future. So if you do have any questions that uh, are more advanced than what you've gotten today, please don't hesitate to contact Anthony and he will be more than happy to guide you through and to help you with your, with your answers. And if you need to contact SCORE uh, concerning setup of accounts or, or specific things concerning your business, we're there also. We'll be more than happy to meet with you. Our sessions at this point in time are being handled primarily uh, virtually like this or by, uh, by phone or, or, uh, or email. Uh, until this uh, whole COVID thing is uh, settled down a little bit more. So again, I thank everyone for, for being here today and I look forward to seeing you in some future sessions that we have. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, John.